Everybody said, <clears throat> Father, we thank you for our leadership development session tonight. We're asking, Lord, that you reveal yourself, reveal your mind, reveal your word more to every one of us in Jesus' name. I will pray that we'll be more capable and more confident in the work you have given us to do and the work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Can see down tonight we are coming to the Psalms and we are looking at portions of Psalm 64, 65, 66, 67, and 68. Please open your Bible to Psalm 64, verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Then in verse 10, it tells us, The righteous shall be glad in the Lord, and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. We come to 65, reading from verse 4. In 65, reading from verse 4, it tells us, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. And then in verse 11, it tells us in verse 11, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. Psalm 66, we're reading from verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Verse 19, it says, But verily, assuredly, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. In verse 20, it says, Blessed be God, which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. In Psalm 67, we're looking at verse 4. Psalm 67, reading from verse 4. O let the nations be glad, and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people in righteousness, or judge them righteously, and govern the nations upon earth. Now Psalm 68, verse 11. In Psalm 68, verse 11, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Psalm 68, verse 19. In verse 19, it tells us, it says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Daily he loads us and he fills us with benefits and with blessings. Even the God of our salvation. Psalm 68, we're looking at verse 32. In verse 32, it tells us, it says, Sing unto God, ye kingdoms of the earth, who seek praises unto the Lord. Verse 35, in verse 35 it tells us, O God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power, giveth strength and power unto his people. Everybody bless the Lord God. Blessed be our God. Everybody said amen. amen. Tonight, as you look at those Psalms, there is something that is very clear. God is good and God is great. God is holy and God loves us. He is love and he blesses us. He daily loads us with blessing and because of that we'll bring a prayer before him and we'll sing praises and shout praises unto him. In fact, it says he crowns the years with his goodness. And that's the topic we're looking at tonight, the crowning of our years with God's goodness, the crowning 
of your own years, the crowning of your life, all your life from the time you come to know the Lord until you leave this world to go and see the Lord face to face, it crowns our years with His goodness. If it's going to do that, that will require prayer. That will require that we're praising the Lord. And that will require that we're walking in the steps of the Lord, in the way, in the plan, in the path He has made for us. Tonight, the crowning of our years with God's goodness. There are three points we're looking at. Number one, the prayer for the promised possession of God's goodness. His goodness is available. His goodness is abundant. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I come, I have come, that you might have life, and that you might have life more abundantly. That abundant life is available, but we need to pray for that promised possession of God's goodness. Point number two, the permanence and prevailing power of God's government. He governs our lives. He governs and rules in the church. He has a kingdom. And because he has a kingdom, the kingdom is the domain of God's rule. He rules and no one can say, what doest thou? And that government has prevailing power and that government is permanent. Point number two, the permanence of prevailing and prevailing power of God's government. Number three, the partakers and the persistent, uh, the persistent proclaimers of God's gospel. The gospel of God, the gospel of grace, the gospel of peace, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of our salvation. We partake of that, we receive of that, we experience of that, and then we're able to reach out to all the people around us. The Lord gave the word, the word of life eternal, the word of the gospel, the word of his grace and great was a company of the people that published it, that proclaimed it, that declared it, that spread it all abroad. The partakers and persistent proclaimers of God's gospel. Point number one now. In point number one, we have the prayer for the promised possession of God's goodness. Let's come back to Psalm 64, reading from verse 1. It says, Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Hear my voice, O oh God, in my prayer. There are people that only think they can pray silent prayers and their voice will not come out. But the psalmist said, I will speak out. I will call aloud. I will let the Lord of heaven hear my voice in my prayer. Preserve my life protect my life, prolong my life, keep my life strong and keep my life sound and keep my life healthy, preserve my life from the fear of enemies, from the fear of my enemy. It tells us in the next uh, Psalm, Psalm 65, reading from verse 2, it says, O God that heareth, hear my voice, O, o thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. It says, God hears prayer. Is the omnipotent one, is the omnipresent one, is the omniscient one. He knows our need. In fact, Jesus said, the Lord, our Father in heaven, knows our need even before we ask him. And he says, because of that ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And he gives us the assurance of answer. He says, which of you, if the son will ask bread, will you give him stone? If he asks fish in the breakfast, will you give him a scorpion? If he be evil, then know how to give good things unto your children. Look at this. How much more? Will your heavenly Father give the good things to those who ask him? O thou that hearest prayer, he hears the prayer of the sinner. 
who comes in penitence, who comes in repentance, save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. He hears the prayers of the sick who will come with assurance and faith and who will say, heal me and I shall be healed. He hears the prayer of the people who are being oppressed by enemies and then those who will seek songs of deliverance unto him and he delivers them. He is able to do all things and because he's able to do all things, all the people that come, believers come for sanctification, sanctify me, purify me, take away the Adamic nature. He hears the prayer and then those who wait upon him for power from on high to be immersed and enveloped and anointed by the Spirit of God. He does that for us. He hears the prayer of those in the church. He hears the prayers of all his creatures. It says, so thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come. Everyone. And look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, blessed is the man whom thou choosest. When people come to know the Lord as their personal Savior by their faith in Christ, God chooses them. It says, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you that you will go and bring forth fruit and your fruit will remain. Blessed is the man, the one that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and is chosen and caused to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy cause. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. When you call upon the Lord and when he chooses you and he hears your prayer and then you come on the basis of the promise of God for your life, spiritual life, eternal life, physical, natural life, he says it will satisfy you with the goodness of his house even of thy holy temple. It tells us in verse 5, it says in verse 5, by terrible things in righteousness wilt thou answer us, O God of our salvation. You see, the psalmist knew the salvation of the Lord. You remember Psalm 51, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Take not thy Holy Spirit and thy free spirit from me. He says, put me with his hope and I shall shall be cleaner, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He knew about real salvation, the same salvation we have in the New Testament. In fact, Romans chapter 4 says, David received that salvation the same way we receive the salvation by grace and you say through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God and when you know the God of salvation and you have the salvation of God, you can come before the Lord and and ask him and whatever you ask the Lord will answer your prayer he says you are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are far off upon the sea look at verse 11 in verse 11 it said thou crownest thou crownest the year with thy goodness I pray all the years of your life how much whatever remains the Lord will crown all your years with his goodness in Jesus name and if uh, you know like Ezekiah you need uh, 10 more 15 more 20 more the Lord will grant your request in Jesus name and your years will not be spent in sorrow your years will not be spent in the famine and your years will not be under the pain of any pandemic in Jesus name he will crown the years of your life with his goodness and your path will drop fatness. Looks like satisfaction is coming upon your life. Abundance is coming upon your life. And all the provision of the Lord for you, it will supply in abundance in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, we're reading from verse 11. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 11, wherefore also we pray always for you. We pray always for you. 
how uh, the minister should be able to say that to all his members, how the overseer should be able to say that to his, all the people in the region and in the state, all the, and the group pastor be able to say that, that you know all the members of your local church, you know all the members and whatever you are going through, they are going through and you can say wherefore also we, are, we pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling. He will count you worthy. He will make you worthy. And it will make that worthiness to splash on, to spill over to all the people we're leading in Jesus' name. And look at this, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. Fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. is able to do it, he will do it in Jesus' name. But you know, there are people who pray and pray and pray. And they specialize in prayer. They pray in the morning. They pray in the afternoon, evening. They pray in the night. They wake up in the dead of the night. And they pray and pray. The only thing is prayer without faith amounts to nothing. Somebody could pray for days and for a week. If there is no faith, there will be no answer. You will see the psalmist, he used the word very many times, trust and also confidence. He says, I trust in the Lord. That's the Old Testament way of saying, I have faith in God. He says, my confidence is in God. He says, the wars rise against me, in this will I be confident. You see the word confidence and the word trust means that it was trusting God and believing God and having faith in God. As we are praying and we ought to pray, we need to pray without ceasing. We need to be importunate in our prayer and we need to pray morning, afternoon and night. In every situation at all times, we need to present our prayers, our requests before the Lord. But we must understand it must hang on faith. It must depend on faith. Look at James chapter 1, reading from verse 5. In James chapter 1, reading from verse 5, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, if any of you lack the way to live, the power to live, the direction to go, the vision to live, if any of you lack wisdom, if you lack anything, anything spiritual, if you lack a Christian experience, if you lack a Christian power, Christian power, and you lack the vigor and the, and the vitality that ought to be in your life, if any of you lack anything, let him ask of God that give it to all liberally. He is good and he gives everyone liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. But look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, but let him ask in faith as you come to the Lord and you pray, there must be a promise you are claiming. There must be a promised possession you are asking the Lord to give you. There must be something you've read in the word of God. This is his will, this is his provision, and this is the promise he has made. And you are coming to the Lord and you are saying, I bring the promise that you made. You said you will do this, and I'm asking because I know you are faithful. I know you cannot fail, and because you cannot fail, that's why I'm asking can do as you have said. You are asking in faith. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And then it says in verse, in verse 7, it says, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8 says, a double-minded man is unstable in all its ways. A double-minded man is asking the Lord, is saying, God, I believe. And then he turns around, I don't know whether God will do it. He comes to the 
the presence of God and then he asked something you know, and then after leaving that place of prayer he says well heaven helps those who help themselves I don't know whether that thing will come speedily or not and he's a double minded man he's a double minded uh, person and because of that he does not get all the goodness that God has made available a double minded man is unstable in all his ways it tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 6 Hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 6 it says but without faith much prayer without faith agonizing prayer without faith fasting and prayer without faith and then seeking the face of the Lord with tears and crying without faith raising the voice and shouting in prayer without faith but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is must believe that not, not only that he was not only that he will be he is today what he was to Abraham, he is today. What he was for Moses, he is today. And what he was for Joshua, he is today. What he was for the early apostles, he is today. He says, I am God, I change not. And because of that, the sons of Jacob, the children of Jacob, are not consumed. And then Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him and we're told Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever and what Jesus was he is today and they did all that and they possess all that in the power of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost the third personality of the Trinity is still the same today as supreme and you offer your prayers before the Lord and you lift your voice in prayer unto God, you must believe that God is today as he ever was and then also that he is a rewarder. He is, not that he was, not that he will be, even today as you pray, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him diligently seeking him and praising the Lord and knowing that what God has promised is able to do and he will do, God will answer your prayer. God will answer my prayer. I don't have any doubt. I don't have any doubt. I don't have any doubt. God will answer my prayer. He will answer your prayer. If you know it will answer your prayer and you are praying by faith, how do you act? How do you behave when you know God is going to answer your prayer? Look at Romans chapter 4, we're reading from verse 19. Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 19. It says in verse 19, it says, I'm being not weak in faith. You are praying whatever you are praying for before you go for the prayer if you need to check up the promises of God again go ahead and check up before you go to pray if you need to meditate on the Word of God and reassure yourself that God is God and God cannot fail if you need to reassure yourself go ahead and do that and meditate on the positive promises of God that cannot fail before you go to pray and then be not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead of course you are praying he was praying because God had promised he'll give him a child he'll give him a son and yet he looked at his body and the condition was dead he wasn't as strong and all the nutrients and all the cells and all the nerves in the body they were not as strong as when he was much younger and then Sarah the wife was not like in a plain way she'll be able to produce any child and yet Abraham did not consider his body now dead when you go to pray of course the situation might be terrible of course the oppression might be something so exome and so difficult you do not consider what you see 
You do not consider what you hear. You do not consider what you feel. You do not consider the condition of the situation in your life because you are praying to a God who can change everything that needs to be changed in your life and he will do it. I said you will do it because of that like Abraham you do not consider your own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb and look at this in verse 20 in verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief there are some promises of God that look so great and so mighty that if you didn't believe if God you will stagger come out and look into the skies and see all the stars of heaven so shall your children be and he had no child at present he could have staggered at that and when God when the angel told Mary you have never known a man you will conceive the Holy Ghost with power of the Holy Ghost will overshadow you and that holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called the son of the highest any virgin can stagger at that but Mary said be it unto me according to thy word when the angel came to uh, the husband of Elizabeth uh, Zechariah and then he says you have a son his name shall be called John is he staggered he said I'm now old how can that be we do not stagger at the promise of God naturally it may look impossible it may look unattainable it may look unreachable it may look so far away in this my short life that remains can i have that you will i said you will the point is look at the promise of god and do not stagger he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but he was strong in faith at a hundred years of age strong in faith at 90 years of age for Sarah strong in age there are people that will say I'm too old to expect anything from the Lord I'm too old to climb any mountain I'm too old to go beyond in those regions beyond I'm too old to say I'm going to have a vision I'm going to have an ideal I'm going to project myself and then I'm going to have that and I'm still going to do this I'm just reading about what Joshua did but now I'm so old can I do that you can you must you will and then I'm looking at Caleb that said give me this mountain at this age I'm too old to have any vision now the vision of the Lord will come unto you and a greater vision the heavenly vision will burst into your heart and life in Jesus name you will not consider I am too old. You will not consider I am too young. You will not consider I'm not educated. You will not consider I do not have the natural, physical uh, virtues to be able to achieve that. Your God will make it possible. The goodness of God will make it possible. You will climb mountains. You will cross oceans. You will go places for the glory of God and for the publication and the proclamation of the gospel in Jesus' name. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Understand? Giving glory to God. The child was not born yet, giving glory to God. The Jericho walls have not fallen down yet, giving glory to God. And Paul and Silas, their feet were still in the stocks, and the prison doors have not been opened, and giving glory to God. And Paul in the storm telling the people, Give me of good cheer, it shall be, even as it was told me, the storm was still there, giving glory to God. Even tonight, as you are giving glory to God in the spiritual realm, all your problems are being solved. 
all your mountains have been moved and that is what the lord wants us to understand that it is not just praying but praying in faith and look at verse 21 in verse 21 it says and be fully persuaded before you go to pray be fully persuaded don't just i pray i pray i pray okay how persuaded are you what promise are you holding on to and how much of the power of God are you holding on to? Be fully persuaded before you go to pray and that persuasion and expectation will bring realization in your life in Jesus' name. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. In my life, God is able. In your family, God is able. In our ministry, God is able. Everything he has pointed out, we will do and achieve. We will do and achieve in Jesus' name. And you will be part of those achievers in the great things of God. In Jesus' name, I am fully persuaded. I am fully persuaded that what God has promised, is able to perform let's come to point number two now in point number two we're looking at the permanence and prevailing power of god's government god's government do you ever realize that that god is the governor god is the ruler god is the administrator and God is the one that oversees everything in life. You know, there are people that do not understand that. And they think, you know, I mean, this particular country, any country in Africa, any country in the West, any country in Europe, and look at this, and look at this, and look at what the government looks like. God is still in charge. I said, God is still in charge. When Joseph was in Egypt, before all those other brothers came, a lot of things happened. He couldn't understand, but God is still in charge. And when Moses was in the wilderness, before he came back uh, to rescue the children of Israel, he heard all the things happening to the children of Israel, the afflictions and the things happening, but he knew God is still in charge. The Canaanites have occupied the land, and here comes in, uh, Joshua and the Lord said every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon I have given unto you the Hittites and the Jebusites and all those people they didn't know all that but God is still in charge uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego facing the fury of Nebuchadnezzar and, De and the Daniel facing the fury of all those presidents and the possibility of getting into the land then they need to understand but God is still in charge and Jesus came and he walked all those places the territory of the Palestinians and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin they thought they were in charge and they thought whatever they decided is what will happen to the man but God was still in charge upon this rock I built my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then when those apostles, when they stepped out to do what they ought to do for the Lord, the Pharisees said, we'll warn you never to mention this name anymore. You fill Jerusalem with your doctrine and you are bringing the blood of the man upon our head. They need to understand God is still in charge. In your life, my brother, my sister, God is still in charge. In your family, God is still in charge. In your local situation there, whatever is happening, he is the governor, he is the administrator, and he is the ruler. God is still in charge. In our church altogether, every branch and the church all over, whatever you read about, you know, somebody wrote this on the social media, somebody also, you know, said this on all that, relax and say God is still in charge. Somebody say there, God is still in charge. 
where he's taking us to, he'll take us there. Everything he wants us to do that he has appointed that this church will accomplish for the kingdom, it will be accomplished because God is still in charge. Help me say it aloud, God. Let's come, let's come to uh, the Psalm, Psalm 67, and we're looking at verse 4. Psalm 67, looking at verse 4. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth and govern the nations in the plural. Not only Israel, not only the people of Judah, and shall govern the nations upon earth. Look at Psalm 22. In Psalm 22, we're looking at verse 27. It says, All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations, nations, nations in the plural, shall worship before thee. Look at verse 28. The assurance we have for the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is Presently, he is at all times, he is the governor among the nations. Nothing will happen to you by accident. God will rule over everything. God will be in charge of everything. You're coming in here and you're going out from here. God is in charge. Every day of your life, going out, coming in, God is in charge. And every good thing he had ordained, every good thing he had planned for your life, Satan is not strong enough to derail the plan of God for your life. All the demons and evil spirits and the powers that be behind the curtain, they are not strong enough to overpower God and disrupt and scatter the plan of God for your life. Everything that God had ordained for your life, for your family, for your ministry, for the church, the Lord will accomplish it in Jesus' name. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, reading from verse 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government of your life will be upon his shoulder. The government of the nations will be upon a shoulder, and the government of every community will be upon a shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, Of the increase of his king, of his uh, government, the increase, the expansion of his king, of his uh, government, the enlargement of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to regulate it, and to direct it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Anytime you look at your life and it appears that things are scattered here and there is all in disarray and you don't know how everything will come back into order, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Every time you hear hey, there is something that happened maybe in your, in your local church or maybe in the church at large together and it appears, what are we going to do? Our hands are down. Everything will be scattered. Every Everything will be in disarray and we don't have the wisdom, we don't have the situation, we don't know the, we don't have the know-how to get everything back together on purpose, on course again. 
rest your mind the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this there is nothing so troubled that the Lord will not bring calm. There is nothing so turbulent that the Lord will not bring peace. And there is nothing so scattered that the Lord will not gather together and make us to go in the right direction. There is nothing uh, so terrible and so oppressive that we panic and we are fearful and we are wondering everything is gone, everything is scattered, everything is destroyed because we don't know what you do, God knows what you do. He will rule, He will govern, He will direct, and then it says, It's the zeal of the Lord of hosts that will perform it. It will perform it in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Daniel chapter 4. We're looking at verse 3. Daniel chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 3. It says, How great are his signs. Here is Nebuchadnezzar. He's now set there, he realized, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. It goes beyond, it extends beyond the kingdoms of this world. And it says the kingdom of God and the kingdom of that stone that was thrown at all the kingdoms of the world the stone that came out without any hand he realized now his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion his domain his kingdom his rulership and everywhere that he so pretends it says his kingdom his dominion is from generation to generation and this our generation is still under the government of God Look at verse 34. In verse 34, it says, And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. My understanding returned unto me. Hold on now. You know what happened to Nebuchadnezzar? What happened to him is that he became mad. He became so mad and deranged that he went out away from his palace, away from his throne, and he was crawling like animal. And then he was eating grass like animal. And you think a person like that will never amount to anything anymore and nobody will respect him anymore. Nobody will look his direction anymore. But God is in charge. I said God is in charge. And then there was nobody to even pray for him. There's nobody, a deliverance minister, that will cast out that kind of devil. But he himself, he came to himself. He knew that God is the one who is in control. And the moment he accepted that God is the one in control, the Almighty God commanded all that mad spirit, all that demonic thing to get out of him. He became normal. I said it became normal. If Nebuchadnezzar, without prayer partner, without anybody wishing him anything or whatever, if he became normal, whatever is happening to anyone in your family, they'll become normal. Yeah. Your child, normal. Yeah. Your wife, normal. Yeah. Your husband, normal. Yeah. We serve a God who cannot fail. Whatever the condition, as terrible as the condition of Nebuchadnezzar, everything will come to normalcy in Jesus' name. And then he said, I bless the Most High and I praised and honored him that liveth forever. Nebuchadnezzar came to the understanding that this God is an everlasting, eternal God. He liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom from generation to generation. Look at verse 35. It says, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. 
all the inhabitants of the earth, the fearful people or the fearsome people, the awesome people, the terrible people, the people you seek, ah, that man, he can cast you into a fire that will be burning and burning. That person, he has the power, he has the authority, and he can destroy you if you are not careful. That woman, be careful if you are not careful. That woman can totally squeeze your life and then take every beauty, all the beauty of your life away. Nebuchadnezzar said, I have now come to understand there is nobody like that on earth that can derail the plan of God for your life. He says, now I know, now I come to the understanding that all the inhabitants of the earth, whatever power they claim, whatever authority they claim, however brutal and wicked they might appear to be, all those inhabitants of the earth, they are reputed as nothing. He, the almighty God, the governor, the ruler of the whole universe, doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. Our king, our governor, our ruler, our redeemer, the one who has who's taking hold of our lives and is leading you to the mountain and to the rock that is higher than you are. He says he doeth his will in the army of heaven among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou as God promotes you I said as God promotes you no angel can challenge God no demon can challenge God nobody can challenge God and say ah, that man are you promoting him what are you putting in there? What are you putting there? No one can ask God, what doest thou? There is no hindrance in your way. There is no hurdle in your way. Don't, don't keep on looking down. Open your eyes and look at the stars and look up. And the Lord will take you to where he has ordained for you to be in Jesus' name. The Lord is in charge in my life. I said the Lord is in charge in my life. And look at, uh, look at Psalm 2. We're looking at verse 6. Psalm 2. We're looking at verse 6. It tells us in Psalm 2 verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. It said the kings are raging. And the kings of the earth, they are conspiring together. And they are saying, let us break their bands. And he says, the God of heaven will laugh at them. And he said, in spite of what all those people of the world are conspiring together, he said, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, I will declare the decree. It's a decree from heaven. The Lord Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. In verse 8, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. What the Lord has said he will do, no hindrance, he will do it. In your life, he will do it. All authority and all power has been committed into the hands of our Savior, our Redeemer. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. In verse 10, it says, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, and be instructed, ye judges of the earth. You know that if you fight against this way, you will fail, and then you will be judged. Be wise. You know that you cannot turn, you cannot derail, you cannot destroy the plan of God and the will of God. What God wants ultimately will still happen. Be wise then, therefore, 
O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. In verse 11, it says, Serve the Lord with fear, serve the Lord with reverence, serve the Lord with awe, and rejoice with trembling. In verse 12, it says, Kiss the Son, believe the Son, embrace the Son, be acquainted with the Son, be friendly with the Son, submit to the Son, kiss the Son, own Him as your King, own Him as your Governor, own Him and accept Him as the all in all in your life. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry and ye perish from the way when His wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. Those who put their trust in Him. Are they here tonight? Yes. You are blessed already. Yes. Blessed are all, the, all of them that put their trust in Him. His power will work in your life. Yes. In Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. In Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. All power, all power in heaven given to Christ, our Savior, our ruler, our director, our supervisor, our governor, the one that the government of our life and the government of, of the church is upon a shoulder. All power is given unto him in heaven. All power is given unto him on earth. And he says, because of that now, look at uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 19. In verse 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Remember, anywhere you are, any territory, any community, all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In verse 20, it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you the one that has all power in heaven and earth he said I am with you are you still afraid are you going to cringe are you going to check out from ministry you remain there and the power that is mighty, the power immeasurable will walk in your life and walk through your life in Jesus' name. And look, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the church said, we come to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the partakers and the persistent proclaimers of God's gospel. The partakers and the persistent proclaimers of God's gospel. We're coming to Psalm 68 and we're reading from verse 11. Psalm 68, reading from verse 11. The Lord gave the word and great was the company of those that published it. The Lord gave the word. Think about that. When Moses came uh, to that place at the burning bush and the, Lord appoint, and the Lord appeared unto him, there is one thing that God gave unto Moses. It was the word. And he said, take that word and go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And he went. And then we'll see the great and mighty things that happened when it came to the time of Joshua to divide the land of Canaan to the Israelites, there was one thing that he had. It was the word. And the Lord came to him and said, Moses, my servant, is dead, but rise up and go through the land. No man shall be able 
able to stand before you all the days of your life and every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you have I not commanded you rise up and do it and this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth you will meditate on it day and night and then to observe and to do all that is written therein and it says you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success all he had was the word of God the Lord gave the word and when Jeremiah was called and Jeremiah said I cannot I'm only a little child and the Lord said don't say you're a little child everywhere I send you you will go and all the people I send you to you will give them the word that I have given unto you I've raised you up uh, to pull down and to clear up and then to destroy and then to build and to raise up again Again, and you say, have made your face like that of the iron, brazen iron, and they will fight against you, but they will not prevail. The Lord gave him the word. All you have is the word we're hearing, and the Lord gives you the word, and you go in the power of that word, you will not fail. Amen. Moses did not fail, you will not fail. Joshua did not fail, you will not fail. And David came, and when David came before Goliath, it was the word. He said, you come to me with arrows and spears, but I come unto you in the name of the Lord. The man had the word, and those who have the word, and they stand upon that word, they will not fall. They will not fail. Nothing will break you down. Your system will be stronger and stronger every day in Jesus' name. Ezekiel, hear the word at my mouth and give it unto them. When I say to a man this and that, don't look at their faces, don't look at their forehead, and don't look at how they are. Your, my word is in your mouth. And I've appointed you a watchman over the house of Israel. Israel, he gave that word and the Lord performed the word. The Lord gave the word to his own apostles and they went forth everywhere preaching the word and the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. The Lord has given you the word. I said the Lord has given you the word and as he has given you the word, you will declare that word. You will proclaim that word. You'll be a partaker of the benefits of the word, the word of salvation, the word of his grace, the word of his power. You'll be a partaker, and then with the engine of that word inside you, you will take it everywhere, like the early church went out everywhere, and they that were scattered abroad, they proclaimed the word, and many people came to know the Lord. And Philip, having the word, all they had was the word, and you have the word and he came to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them and evil spirits came out of many and many people were healed and there was great joy in that city. It says they went out and they declared what the Lord had given to them. My time has now come. Your time has now come. And look at Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 31. Acts chapter 4, we're reading from verse 31. It tells us, it says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaking when they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they speak. You are going to speak? And they speak. I said you are going to speak. In the power of the Holy Ghost, you are going to speak. In the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you are going to speak. In the enveloping, saturating of the power from on high, you are going to speak in Jesus' name with the heavenly vision that you have. As the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will speak in Jesus' name. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. And they speak the word of God with boldness. And as you go out and you proclaim the gospel and you proclaim the power of God, many signs and wonders will take place and many people will turn to the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 11. We're reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 11 and we're looking at verse 19 now now they 
that were, they that were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. And then in verse 20, it tells us, and some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, they spake to the Greeks, preaching the Lord Jesus. That's the word that has been given to us that we're going to preach everywhere we go. And then in verse 21, in verse 21, and the hand of the Lord was with them and the hand of the Lord will be with you and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord and you hear your amen there it's now my turn I said it's now my turn what you thought you couldn't do before you will do this gospel you will preach you'll preach it with power you'll preach it with anointing you'll preach it with persuasion and the Lord has said, he will never leave you, he will never forsake you, he will be with you all the way through. And as he is with you, as he was with them, the same great things they saw, you will see in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. In Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 20, here is what the Lord is saying, and they went forth. Somebody there is going forth and they went forth and they preached everywhere. We go forth and we preach everywhere. The Lord walking with them, the Lord walking with you and confirming the word was signs following. In your life, in your ministry, in your engagement, in your participation, in proclaiming the gospel persistently, persuasively, and without getting tired, and moving on and on, going forth and preaching, going forth and preaching, the Lord will walk with you, and he will confirm the word was signs following. And the whole church said, Amen. Why don't you rise up and say, I know now it's my turn. I have the word. I have the gospel. And this gospel, I will take it to my community. There is nothing to fear. And there is none to fear. You will take that word and you will declare persuasively. And you will declare passionately. And you will declare pungently. And you will declare it with purpose that the people who hear will respond and many will turn to the Lord and the Lord will walk with you for signs following.